Welcome to Whole Nation. I'm your host, Rich Pyle. Now, we just got back from the ACO Kalamazoo Major, where somebody came home with a brand new purple jersey. You know what I'm talking about, the purple jersey, the coveted jersey that you earn when you win your division at a major. Well, my wife told me, hey, my suitcase is full. I need you to carry my purple jersey in your suitcase, which unfortunately is about as close as I'm ever gonna get to bringing home a purple jersey. But here we are in the Whole Nation Studios, very excited, season 17, brand new season, brand new setup for Whole Nation. Today we have the great Barry Hempy, and we're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk to him about some of the great accomplishments that he's had in his life. We have some cornhole royalty, Sonia Gears. She's gonna talk to us in a new segment that we are calling Rise of the Woman. Of course, we have the Get to Know Your ACO Family and a brand new segment that we call Toss Tech. We re talk to some of the pros about the different throwing techniques for different types of bags that are used in the games. This and so much more. So glad to have you here on Whole Nation, season 17, the first one coming at you right now. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. I'm Rich Pyle, your host of Whole Nation, and here we are in Whole Nation Studios with my boy, Barry Hempy. Barry, welcome to Whole Nation. Thank you. So, you've been involved with the ACO for how long now? Uh, the ACO, probably about eight, nine years. Really? Like that, okay. For sure how long. About eight been, or nine years. Yeah, probably did, been playing Cornhole 12, 13 years. And how did you get involved with it what made you go with you know the the, the, the got, a graduation, got a graduation party and it was there started playing it yeah went home and made my own set so you made your first set of boards were they better than the boards that you see nowadays no 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 uh, no the boards now are nice the board <laughs> <laughs> completely different than the boards that i made the boards now are nice it's probably the finish that i put on them so it's different to us why what i put way too much polyurethane on them they was super slick you know, I did the same thing, Go, I think it was probably about 12 years ago. I made my own set, and I put 11 coats of polyurethane on it and sanded in between each one of it, and they're like, they're still, they're in great shape, right? So the weather, the humidity, the wet rain, and you know, times like, hasn't touched the board because they've got like, you know, that much polyurethane it's gotta get through to get to the wood. So they're still in perfect shape, but they're fast as hell. It's, it's, it's hard to keep them on them. It, literally, if they hit the back of the board, sometimes they just keep sliding off oh to the front God. of it. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Yeah. Which goes to show uh, playing on really slick boards or practicing on really slick boards is not going to help your game whatsoever. No. Now, if you've seen me play, what you did, you gave me tips yesterday. <laughs> like, Rich, why do you suck so bad? I think that was the tip that you gave me, right? <laughs> it was pretty similar to that. <laughs> Why do you suck so bad? How can anybody be that terrible? <laughs> and then you gave me advice, right? Yeah. I think it was something like, uh, just stop playing. No. My advice that to you, Rich, is just stop playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so you did, I mean, you pulled me aside, right? And you were like, hey, listen, I noticed that you're doing this, and I think that if you tried this, this might be able to help out your game, which I don't want to tell any of my secrets. I don't want anybody to be able to use that against me at right. some point when I get exactly. up to that really high level. But I will. Well, you can because you give me the advice. Do you do that often? Yeah. Yeah, I like to try to help people out. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm a better coach than I am player. <laughs> I said the same thing about myself, you know? Actually, my wife told me that. She's like, you know what they say, the people that can't play coach. <laughs> so she tells me I'm a great coach. Yeah, me too. You tell me I'm a great coach too? I know. I <laughs> feel the same way about myself. Now, I saw you late, late last year in Branson, right? So we did the Pro Series Championship, right? The, the made-for-TV filming that we did for the, the, right. the tournament that, that, was, that was filmed out there in Branson. Now, some of the, there were some players that were chosen to be part of that, that series, and some people that uh, 
uh, were, were involved in the top seeding of the tournament, the major that was going out there. What was your role? How did you get uh, onto the, because you were one of the people that were filmed on the series, the, yeah. the, 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 the top 16. Yeah. How did you get your position? Uh, actually, they took the top eight from the tournament and yeah. made it, and I made it in the top eight. So you actually played your way in to earn your spot to be able to do yep. that. How did that go? How, how, what was uh, your, first of all, you know, b before you tell me how you ended up. Okay. What was your experience? How was the experience for you? Oh, it was a blast. Yeah? Yeah. You want to elaborate on that a little no, bit? Barry, go ahead, help me out here. Just, just it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, I don't know. It was different than any corner I ever played. Cause yeah. There's so many people around and just. And then I mean, the, the tournament itself was giant. It was huge. Yeah. It, it may have been the biggest one ever, yeah, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. But I mean, getting on the court, having to try to focus in, because I was there, you know, I was hosting, so my 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 view is probably different. So I want to I want to hear well, it from the players' point of Mark's view. Mark Smothers, that was my first game. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. there was a lot of chatter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that kind of that helped ease ease up the, any anxiety or anything that I had was Mark. He he's a clown. Uh, how how was the anxiety with the cameras, the big giant uh, cameras and the giant lights yeah. and the, I mean the set itself was just kind of mind-blowing to walk in there was kind of intimidating just walking into it, that kind it was, of a set yep, wasn't it yep and i'm not one for that kind of stuff really but for what kind of stuff like being televised or attention recorded, and, recorded or anything okay like so on a, on a personal note i have heard that you and your wife have fostered like over 30 kids throughout yep. your lives yep how did you get involved in, in doing that because i'll tell you what just to be able to foster a kid just one kid you have to have a huge heart 30 yeah, yeah, and most of them were for a year or so at a time. So. How did you get involved with that? I and mean, you get attached to them, and you have to. They go back to home or to a different house or somewhere. It's tough. It's got to be tough. Yeah, I mean, we just we never had any children of our own, so after a few years, we just decided to start helping out that way. Wow. Well, now you had over thirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in contact with several of them. Yeah. So yeah. That's. That's great. I mean, what a, I mean, if there's, if it, raising the kids or, or at least, you know, helping kids out through a situation and helping grow them, uh, that, I, kudos to you, man, because I'll tell you what, if there was more people like you in this world, um, as far as that aspect goes, it would be a much better place for Thank sure. You. Yep. We actually adopted four of them. Did you really? Yep. And, and how old, what's the, what's the ages of, of those four now? Can I put you on the spot here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the, I think the three oldest ones are 29, 28, and 27. They were all siblings. And oh. And then there's an, another boy, which he's 20. He's still at home. So. Oh, he's still living with you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what? How long ago did you start doing this? So there's 30 kid, 30 something kids that you fostered. How uh, long yeah, ago did you start it? Like in right around. 2000, 2001. So you've been doing it for 20 something years well, now, right around 20? We've probably not been doing it for five years now. So we did it for about 15 years. How many kids did you average in your house? I mean, was it one kid at a time? No, or was... normally two or three. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then we did several others, like on weekends and stuff like that. I'll tell you what, Barry, all those bad things that I've said about you, I, I only mean <laughs> half of them now. <laughs> I still mean all I've said. <laughs> So how many majors have you been to this year? This is this is my second. This is your second. What was your first one? Uh, Charleston. How was that one? Uh, it was pretty good. I think I ended up seventh. Seventh? How are you doing in this one? Uh, I made it out of pool play. Oh, you did? We'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, right. Okay, that's a good start. Yeah. I made it out of pool play once. Did you? I did. <laughs> there was once I didn't. Huh? There was once I didn't. <laughs> well, you can have mine then. Okay. If you want the one, that, the, the one that I did make it out of, if you want that one to, to take away the take one you away. didn't, you can ha you can have the, you know, okay. all of them you were Thank in you. now. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. And you know, you owe me a shot later. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you've obviously been to a lot of majors. Yep. Is there one that stands out? I think it's been two years ago, maybe not with COVID, maybe it's been three years ago. I won the conference like three years ago. That was probably my biggest win ever. Was that the most memorable? Was Yeah. So winning means more than anything to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it, everybody? <laughs> so, most importantly, though, who is your favorite host 
or interviewer of any show. Far. All right. Yeah, you, you, you've redeemed yourself, okay. Barry. Barry, uh, I have a new perspective on you now. I mean, I've always thought you were a nice guy. I always thought you were funny. You know, I, uh, you do exactly what you said. You sit around in the corner when I walk by or something. You, you throw a jab at me or something like that. And I think it's hilarious. I, I appreciate that. But I have a new perspective on you now, finding out that you have fostered all these kids, that you've helped become a, a huge influence in their lives and hopefully push them on to be become better people for their benefit and not for yours it, it, it really truly puts you up many 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 notches on my on my respect level good thank you I, no thank you Barry. and thank you for being here with us today you're welcome i appreciate it thank you buddy thanks all right yes sir this episode of Toss Tech. So we're gonna talk about the techniques of the tumble bag today, the tumble bag or the roll bag or the flop shot, or I know it's known by a lot of different things. And with me is Austin Cameron, also known as Audie. Audie, what do you call the shot? I call it a flop shot. Flop shot. Yeah. So Audie's gonna show and tell us his technique of the flop shot, the way that he likes to do it. So Audie, why don't you tell us what you like so to do? So first, I grip the bag at a butterfly grip and that's gripping it tight. And then instead of like throwing it, you like push it out of your hand. So that's what I do. So what is the, the reason that you, instead of throw it, you're pushing it, why are you, why are you pushing it? What does that do? It makes a tilt on the bag on like an angle. On, what, on a it, front angle or a back angle? or A back angle and it makes it just roll over the bag. So what are you aiming for? Why, and why would you use this, this shot in the first place? Set, set, set up the gameplay. Where are we? Where are we at in the game that you're thinking about throwing the flap shot? If it's a close game and you can't afford a bag off the uh, off the board, then I would choose a roll because it's more safer than an airmail. And then I would use it if they use a, if they put a block right in front of the hole, and it's more safer, like I just said. So. So you so you push it, push it out of your hand, which gives it a tilt. Back tilt, front tilt. Back tilt. Okay. And you're aiming for what? Right in front of the bag that's in front of the hole. For, so the front part of the blocker. Yes. Okay, and, and it hits, opened up like this, and just yep. flops over top yes, of it, sir. rolls over top of it, or yes, whatever it is. Yep. You want to show us what you got? Show us how it's done. All right. Your technique of how you do it. All How I throw the Audi flop. Welcome to Whole Nation. I'm your host, Rich Pyle. This is a segment where we like to show you the people that make up the ACO and its family. So continue watching as we show you how to get to know your ACO family. Sheely. I live in Tuscumbia, Alabama right now. I've been playing cornhole about five, maybe six months. We've been with the ACO a little less than that because we started playing in the backyard like everybody else. Um, we play with the North Alabama Baggers, which is home to Amber Fretwell, who I definitely think is going to be crowned the queen of cornhole, just like she was woman of the year. Uh, while we've been in Bradenton, we've been to the beach. We've been out to eat all the places, all the things. We love it here. We love Florida, but we love Cornhole Bunch. My name is Sean Anderson. I've been playing Cornhole from, for mm, probably about six years now. I've been with the ACO for six years. Affiliated Cornhole groups are uh, South Mississippi Cornhole, and Mississippi Coast Cornhole. Who's gonna be crowned king of cornhole? Eh, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, hopefully it's me though. 
uh, Queen. Uh, but I'll say Maggie. Maggie's been pretty tough. Hi, my name is Ryder, and I'm from Decatur County, Tennessee. How long have I been playing with I've been playing with ACO for about a month, and I've been playing corno for about a year. Main Street Girl is my corno, and I've been playing there since a year ago. A uh, corno queen is going to be definitely Maggie. I'm going to say Maggie. King is, I think, Caleb. Caleb or DJ. My plans in Bradenton are to eat some seafood. I have a brother, he's Linkers, and we just like to play in our room a lot. And he's really mean. Welcome to Whole Nation and this episode of Rise of the Woman. In the studio today we have with us the one woman who probably has the most difficult job um, in the ACO. Please welcome Sonia Gears. Sonia, welcome to Whole Nation. Hi, Rich. Thanks for having me. Um, and I did say that you have probably the most difficult job because you are the wife of Frank Gears, so that does make you the cornhole dudette. It does make me the cornhole dudette, and I hold that title in high regard. You should, you should. I mean, how about the other title of being the wife of Frank Gears? The wife of Frank Gears, sometimes I try to not let people know that I'm the wife of Frank Gears. <laughs> Maybe we should cut that out. <laughs> should we edit that part of it out? So, when Frank came to you all those years ago, what was it, probably 17, it was 18 years ago? About 18 years ago. He came to you and he said, listen, I want to run the world's biggest and best cornhole company. What did I do? Yes. I cried. I cried. I cried for days. He had a real people job, big person, grown up job, and he wanted to change all of our direction in our life and he said I, I believe in this this is something I've always wanted to do I love cornhole I love the sport of cornhole I love being with people and I think I can do this and I cried again for the next couple days <laughs> and I said you know what is this gonna make you happy and he said yeah it's gonna make me happy and I said all right let's go for it and here we are 17 years later. 17 yeah. years later. Yeah, 17 years later. So, and it's now a whole family excursion. It's a family affair. We've got all the boys here finally. All right. They're grown up. They're able to actually help us out. And you get in. You had both, all three of your kids when Frank came up with this idea, right? It I wasn't had, just like the two of you and oh nothing no. else to support? Oh no. I had, th I had three babies. Uh, Bailey was seven. Max was four and Charlie was two when he said he wants to quit his job and he wants to do cornhole. So, right, I had babies. So how, especially in the younger years, or, or the kids' younger years, um, how difficult was that for you to know that Frank was leaving basically every weekend to go and do tournaments and what? Do you want the serious answer? Or do you want the actual answer? <laughs> Is there a difference? There's a difference. Give me both of them. There's a difference. It was hard. It was hard having babies and having to parent, be a one parent for, for so many years. But we have such a strong support system in the place that we live with family that's there and with friends and neighbors that are like our family. Um, but I have to tell you, Frank was so happy. So when he would come back from wherever he was working, and he was excited and happy about it, it was, it became easy, it became easy. Um, it's always better to have a spouse who is loving what they do, enjoying what they're doing, and able to spend maybe Monday through Thursday morning with you, than somebody who's grumpy, doesn't wanna go to work, and you know, it's, it's, it's a toll on their, on their systems. But no, it's hard, um, if anybody knows Frank Gears, Living with Frank Gears is not easy day to day, so it's actually kind of nice <laughs> to, have, <laughs> to have my weekends no. free, um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually really excited because now that the boys are grown, mm -hmm. my responsibilities at home aren't as 
much as they used to be. I'm going to be able to get to travel a little bit with him. Mm. And I have to tell you, traveling with him in just the couple of majors that I've been to and now this world, I understand why he's so happy. Yeah. I do. The people are just, they're great. Um, it is a family, so it is a family away from home. Yeah. And and everybody's just excited and they I think they all see his vision. And so they're happy that he's here, they're happy that we're here. So it's it's a good thing. It's it, a good thing. Yes, but when you're not involved in the cornhole world, what is it that you like to do for you? Well, I am a transitional kindergarten teacher, which means I have five and six year olds. I teach. Now I know how you can deal with Frank. <laughs> That's exactly right. I got a whole house full of kids. Um, so I, ha I teach five and six year olds during the school year, which is my passion. I got my degree from Xavier University as a Montessori teacher and an early childhood educator. I've been actually doing this for 15 years now. So while he's been out doing his dream, I've been doing my dream. Um, so I do that all year long. I have lots of great friends that I get to do lots of spa time with. I love the spa time. <laughs> All the girls love the spa time. Um, Some of the guys I, do too. Yeah, yeah, and I garden and I'm into antiquing and all of that. So I keep myself busy, but it's not difficult, again, with three boys and Frank. <laughs> Now, do you, you get to play cornhole? Or do you like to play cornhole? What? So, I think that I would have been an incredible cornhole. I might have been able to win a couple of these, I have to tell you. I'm going to toot my own horn here. When I was in high school, I was an, I, I was, I was an all-American underhand pitch softball person. Get out of here. Yep, but then, you know, with Frank's partying style. We had a party one night and it was a little too big and I was vacuuming up some um, confetti, lifted the love seat up on my knee and I have two herniated discs in my back. Oh my. So I cannot play. I cannot play. You can't play cornhole at all? I cannot all. play cornhole at all. No, five pitches and I'm out. Really? So, yeah. Well, maybe if you were getting better, five pitches is all it would take to win. I'm going to have to practice that. Uh. <laughs> So you being exposed to, to, to more people around the world than anybody has, other than maybe Frank, if, there, if you could reach out to these young women or women in general that are on the fence about whether or not they want to join this primarily male-dominated sport, um, is there something you could reach out to them to make them feel more comfortable about that transition or, or make them want to be part of the game of cornhole? Absolutely. However, what I want to say is, is that I think that if a woman wants to come and play this cornhole game, mm -hmm. that she should not worry about if it's a male-dominated field, if it is an age bracket that she thinks she's too young or she's too old. I think we need to start talking about let's just all playing together, being the best players that we can be, whether we're man, woman, kids, young, old, couples, singles, just get out there and do what you love and get all of the other stuff out of your head and just play cornhole. It's a competition, it's a game, but it's a passion for most of these people. People aren't looking at you as a woman coming in. People are looking at you as a cornhole player. So start being that cornhole player that you know that you can be and just do it. And I would make that suggestion to women in whatever it is that they want to do. Quit we, the gender thing, it should be gone by now. We should be just focusing on what we love and what we can do the best and take it from there and just do it. Just keep on pitching, as Frank says, right? I think uh, that pretty much sums it all up. I cannot say anything better than what you just did. Okay. One last game I want to play with you. Well, <laughs> let's rephrase that one. <laughs> popcorn quiz. You want to play popcorn I quiz? I love popcorn. Well, I'm you from don't Pittsburgh. know a popcorn quiz. I just made it up. But I'm from Pittsburgh, and it's popcorn. Go ahead. It's popcorn because you're on Whole Nation, popcorn. and I make the rules here. Popcorn quiz. Okay, so this okay. is what we're going to do. Ready. Popcorn quiz. All right. I'm going to give you a choice. On these cards, random cards, don't know what they are. I can do it. You give me an answer. Do I get a, do I get a prize? Uh, what am I playing for? I gotta know what I'm playing you're for. You're playing for the championship of, you're playing for 
Hampton Farms peanuts. Because I don't Woo! have enough of those. But they are delicious. Hampton Farm peanuts are the best peanuts in town. Go ahead. I've been down, <laughs> outdone on my own set. Okay, ready? So, yeah. popcorn quiz. Okay. I'm going to read you uh, what's, whatever's on these random cards. All right. You're going to give me the answer, right? Okay. You're going to give me this or that. What oh I'm going to and and, and, be bad. and you can give me a reason, or you don't have to give me a reason, okay. but you have no time to think about it. You got to do it right that okay. second. Okay. All right. I'm ready. If I'm you ready. wait too long, eh, we're passing. All right. Okay. I'm All right. Ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Popcorn quiz. Here we go. Okay, what are we, we playing? Popcorn quiz. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Yeah. B bikini or one piece? One piece. No explanation. Okay. Oh. Uh, I, no. I, I, too much time. Okay. Okay. Oceans or mountain? Oh, oceans. Absolutely oceans. Except I'm afraid of fish, so I don't actually go into the oceans. But I like to look at the oceans and I like to stand at the oceans. Okay. okay. We're gonna have to go with faster answers. Than oh, that. okay. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Uh, cat or dog? <sighs> this is gonna be a problem because I really don't want any animal hair in my house at eh. all. Okay. Too much time. Okay. okay ready? All right. <laughs> Horror or comedy? What? Horror or comedy? <laughs> yes, go ahead. We don't even need we don't even need to answer that one. Is this a kid's show? <laughs> family, family. Okay. Go ahead. I'm ready. Okay. Rock or country? Well, see, this is a problem too, because my son sings country, but I'm an 80s rockin' chick, so. Can I do country rock? Sure. Okay, go. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee, all the way, all day long, hot and black. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna get meat or veggies? Well, again, if it's a really good steak, I want <clears> to <throat> steak. Too okay, much time. Go ahead. Okay, ninja or pirates? Oh, pirates, all the way. I am seriously a pirate girl. I love. I have pirate day in my classroom. I just love pirates. Arr, matey. Okay. Uh, we're not going to ask you that one. Okay, beer or liquor? Liquor. Liquor is quicker, they say. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you and an honor to finally have you on Home Nation. I'm so excited to be with you. Thank you, the Cornhole Dudette, <laughs> Sonia right. Gears. Bye, guys.